female genital cutting. Most commonly done before puberty, some young girls will have their clitoris completely removed to preserve their virginity. It's important to talk about what happens physically so that every human being, male and female, understand that the genitals of the female are cut, uh, that the clitoris is cut, that uh, the labia are cut, that uh, the vagina is sewn shut. Female genital mutilation is not advocated in Islam in any way, shape or form. It doesn't appear in the Quran, but has very much been adopted by some Muslim societies. It's going everywhere in the world where the Muslim Brotherhood goes. It can cause bleeding, infection, infertility and even death. It cannot be compared to male circumcision. It is very different. It is to limit the sexuality of, um, of the female. Circumcision is healthy for girls. I know this. Purified girls grow taller and get marriage proposals. But unpurified girls stay short and stubby. It's definitely linked to the issue of honor, because again, it's about controlling female sexuality. Circumcision is the reason why Muslim women are virtuous, unlike Western women who run after their sexual appetite in any place with any man. We are seeing more cases of female genital mutilation in the US, in Canada and in UK. So it has been imported into the West as a cultural practice. My legs were spread and I just thought, this is not right. And then I just felt this pain. I remember just screaming and I think everyone was just shocked because it's like I had like 50 pairs of hands just cover my, my, my mouth, my nose and I was just, I was fighting. I remember just fighting, fighting, fighting. I can hear it, the sound, just the cutting. I remember before it, it began, I was still lying there. Um, she was negotiating with my mum with the money. And she had to, my mum had to pay her extra for using a new um, razor. One of my sisters died from it. One of your sisters died? Yeah. How old was she? She was a week. Because FGM is illegal in the West, many families do it under the table, they do it in secret, and in some cases they take the girls back to their home countries, have this uh, done on them, and then bring them back. What this holiday will mean for girls as young as five will be a journey abroad, during which their clitoris will be cut out, either entirely or partially. It happens to about 6,000 girls every day it's a plague, it's an epidemic. In my family, my cousins were just going for circumcision the next day, so everybody was preparing food and they were making a big uh, event. So I was in my uncle's house, so I, I went, I had small booklets on how harmful circumcision is, mm -hmm. and I sneaked up to his room and I gave him the books. Mm -hmm. And I told him, don't do that. You know what happened? He came because his eldest daughter was circumcised. He came crying and he really asked his daughter to, to, to forgive him and he refused for the, the other two to be circumcised the next day. The lashback I got from my mom that how dare me to talk about these issues to men. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, but from that day, they, thank God they are now generations, they are mothers and they have their children. There's no circumcision took place. Yeah. Yeah. And there must be fathers like that out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, that. No, I'm that sure he, did, he was so filter. indifferent because it was a decision yeah. made by women, because that's yeah. how yeah. men actually put the burden on women on yeah. these yeah. kind exactly. of things. It's important to say that women are helping to perpetuate these things by committing some of the acts, but at this point, it is still a game of survival. When a woman is raising her daughter, she knows that there are consequences for not following a particular order. And when you ask the women, they tell you, but if they don't get circumcised, they will not get married. And, and that's so brilliant that men always sneak out of responsibilities and say, this is not what we said. The women are the one who are doing this. Why do we think exactly. patriarchy is never a question? Yeah, because mm -hmm. we women, are the main maintainers to that system. Mm -hmm. They're always m made to preserve the patriarchal societies. When Pakistani woman said to me the other day, she said, 
you know, when we are born, we are controlled by our father. Then we are controlled by our brothers. Then we are married and we are controlled by our husbands. And today she said, I'm controlled by my sons. And this is essentially power patriarchy control in, in a woman's life. And sometimes they are the ones who just give in to all the stereotypes yeah. and they, yeah. you know, they actually accept mm. some of the abuse that's told out to them. I've had yeah. many women say, no, it's okay, I'm happy to be this way. You know, yeah. I'm happy to be submissive. Yeah. I'm happy uh, that someone else tells me what to do. This embedded patriarchy, mm. the power and the politics mm. is such a lethal combination. Mm. I sometimes look back and I think, wow, how different could my life have been had I been born in a different geographical setting, in a different time, in a different era, a different place on the map. It's just by chance. My father came here in the late 50s from Afghanistan. He wanted us to have the life that he never experienced. My mother was the same way. She didn't get to experience a lot of opportunities, choices, and the things that I have. So my parents lived vicariously through us and encouraged us to explore every opportunity we, we got, to live life, to experience things the way that they didn't get to. I'm a clinical therapist. I work primarily with women who are survivors of domestic violence. There's no self-esteem in these women. There's no self-worth. How do you weaken people or handicap them? You take away their ability to make decisions for themselves. You take away that ability for them to decide what is right and wrong. Autonomy, empowerment. 